Welcome back to the Flight Simulator First Officer channel. As you can see, we're out here again in the PMDG 737, and today we're going to be showcasing FSFO's ability to operate as a virtual co-pilot for this aircraft. Okay, FSFO has been launched, and uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure it's connected to the aircraft, and you can do so uh, by simply clicking the, uh, the power button here in the, uh, in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, as you can see, it's now connected, and the co-pilot uh, is, uh, is going to start his pre-flight flow in the designated time here. Uh, the reason why I have that 30-second option set is to allow myself to ensure that the flight plan has been uh, properly downloaded uh, from SimBrief. Let me go ahead and pause and explain this uh, in, in greater detail. Uh, so this right here, as you can see, is pre-populated because I use the configuration option, uh, SimBrief, uh, I put my ID in, and I have the uh, the download uh, set to yes. So every time you launch FSFO, uh, it will download its last uh, your last um, uh, flight plan that you generated via SimBrief. There are two other ways that you can uh, download the uh, the data. You can simply import any Microsoft uh, flight plan uh, PLN file, which is right here. You can just simply select on it and click to open. Uh, this also gives you the option to import the flight plan into Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, which is a, an option uh, that is useful if you're using, let's say, the default ATC. So it will have all that data there for you. It's also useful if you're using a default aircraft, uh, as this will pre-populate the FMC. Uh, but I'm not using the default ATC today. Uh, and of course, we're in the PMDG 737, so we'll be have to set our FMC data by ourselves. So we'll just select no there. Uh, the third option is quite simply to go ahead and type out the ICOA codes and um, then simply hit uh, calculate. And then as you can see, if these uh, two ICOA codes turn to green, you have a properly uh, calculated flight plan. Calculating the flight plans or inputting the data is important uh, because it triggers FSFO uh, to perform certain uh, tasks at certain uh, points uh, during the, uh, the flight. For example, uh, it needs the planned uh, flight altitude because once you reach that altitude, the first officer will inform the, uh, the passengers that you've reached the cruising altitude. This uh, initial altitude is important if you're using the, uh, uh, the option for the co-pilot to set the MCP uh, during the pre-flight flow. This is the initial altitude that he would go ahead and to set. Um, but as I said, I'm going to use SimBrief. I'm just going to hit download uh, uh, from SimBrief, and this pre-populates all the data that was generated the last uh, uh, sim brief um, uh, flight plan that you generated. All right, so I'm also going to set some other data uh, because I am using the option for the co-pilot to uh, uh, program FMC during pre-flight. Uh, I wanted to showcase that, that ability. Uh, typically, I have that off because realistically, the captain would go ahead and, and uh, program his FMC, but I wanted to showcase that ability so we have that in. Since I am using that option, it requires me to enter uh, uh, some data. For example, the flap setting. Uh, these, again, are detents. So flaps 4 on the PMDG 737 would configure, or detent 4 would correlate to flaps 10 uh, on the, uh, on, on, in, within FSFO. I'm using a takeoff configuration of 1, and I'm using a derated temperature of 47. Now. I get this data, uh, the derated temperature and the takeoff data, uh, from a program called TopCat. Uh, for those of you who have been around Flight Sim for a while, you're well aware of that, uh, the program. So that's where I'm getting my takeoff configuration data from. And again, this is important because you're going to watch the co-pilot enter uh, this configuration data into his FMC during the, uh, the, the uh, before start flow. All right, so we also have the fuel. This is the fuel that was abstracted from the uh, uh, sim brief. So this, again, um, using an advanced option called uh, load fuel payload for PMDG aircraft is set to 1. So the co-pilot will go ahead and enter both the zero fuel weight and the fuel into his FMC. And that's how that, that uh, uh, the fuel and, and uh, passengers will be loaded onto this aircraft. Your co-pilot would do it for you as long as this data is set here. Again, by the way, this is uh, just three digits based on 100 pounds, so 115 in this case. So let's go ahead and unpause the simulator now that I have all my flight plan data uh, inputted, and uh, we'll, let's continue the countdown. Again, the 30 seconds is a configuration option that's uh, set right here. That's just the time I need to make sure the flight plan is uh, downloaded. All right, so the first thing the co-pilot's going to do is he's going to check some safety systems, and I'm setting things into the wrong uh, uh, 
position on purpose. Good afternoon, Captain. So you can see him as he uh, as he's going to configure all these switches correctly during the uh, the safety switch. Wipers, uh, the start switches. Uh, you'll see him come down here um, as he works his way down. Uh, the start reliever was uh, set off, and you should see the throttle also move uh, into the uh, into the idle position, and then the parking brake goes on. Uh, so again, he's checking the aircraft to ensure that uh, it's in a safe condition before establishing power, uh, which he's doing so now. He went ahead and turned on the main battery. It takes roughly 90 seconds for the uh, 737 to energize. Uh, once this uh, this concludes, the battery uh, powers up, if you will. The co-pilot's then going to manipulate his FMC uh, to configure uh, or request the ground power unit and establish GPU power. That is, again, a configuration option um, that is set right here in the startup power source. You have two options. You have GPU and APU. Um, so I'm using a GPU, which is a more realistic setup. If you're pressed for time, you could just use that APU. Uh, there are a lot of options uh, within uh, within uh, uh, FSFO. If you're um, uh, inquisitive to what these options do, you can simply hover over the label, and you can see uh, read uh, what it is uh, that uh, that is required, or what it is that each one of these uh, each one of these do. All right, so uh, we got about 25 seconds. Again, uh, every time you see these countdowns, you can have you do have the option to to skip them by holding Control plus the Alt key. I recommend uh, waiting. These uh, uh, are here for a reason. Uh, they core for, uh, correlate to uh, real-world operations, uh, and you can get out of sync if you do uh, if you do skip these or, or don't allow uh, uh, certain things to happen in the order they need to. All right, so there we go. The power is configured. You see the co-pilot down there now requesting the uh, the GPU connection from his FMC. It takes about 15 seconds, 20 seconds for that to connect to the aircraft. And then once that happens, you'll see the, uh, the co-pilot here is going to manipulate the ground power unit switch to the on position to transfer uh, power uh, to the GPUs. And here we go. And the, the aircraft is now on uh, the GPU. So we'll turn that down just a little bit. All right, so... Where he's at, what he's doing right now is he's performing uh, the, the system test uh, in order here, uh, fire test, CVR test. Um, he's actually up in this panel, or excuse me, he's down in this panel right here performing his fire test. Um, what will happen, what that's based on, is because when the co-pilot entered the, uh, the cockpit, uh, he saw it was in a cold and dark state, so he assumed that this was the first flight of the day based on another uh, configuration option right here, no power equals system test. Um, again, uh, this is a, a requirement. These are real world procedures for first flight of the day. Uh, they do consume some time, so if that's not something uh, uh, you wanna do, uh, then you can just go ahead and skip that, or excuse me, set that option to no, and then the co-pilot won't perform uh, the system tests that are required for the first flight of the day. All right, so the lights test, you can see he's looking at all the lights to making sure that they are, uh, the light bulbs are, are in good working order, um, and that's completed. It's got, you're going to hear the oxygen in a minute. There's the oxygen test, and then down here you'll see him uh, checking out the uh, autopilot disconnect uh, test, both one and two. So there that goes. And then after that happens, guys, he's working his way down, and you'll see him right now... Um, uh, he, this is where he's going to program uh, the uh, the FMC. So um, you'll see that here in just a minute. And here it comes. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to set the position uh, of the aircraft, which tells the GPS, uh, the computer, where the aircraft is located in the world. So the next thing he's doing here is he's setting uh, the, um, the route. He's inputting the route parameter, or excuse me, the route name that we downloaded from SimBrief. Um, Again, for uh, PMDG, uh, you need to put the, uh, the route that you downloaded into the PMDG work flight plans folder, and you cannot have any uh, numeric designators. So again, there's the, uh, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So there it is, the compiler just set the fuel that we put in the pref screen that you saw earlier. Now he's setting the zero fuel weight. And um, 
with that out of the way, he has the uh, the the aircraft uh, set. Uh, he, the fuel, the payloads loaded, position the IRS is set, and the position has been entered in the computer, and he's now continuing with his uh, his pre-flight flow, uh, working down the panels, down the panels. You see, he's up the window heat now. Uh, he'll go down here to the to the uh, anti-ice to make sure that's off, then to the hydraulics, and now he's al already over to the packs, turning those on. Uh, ignition switches now, making sure those are off, and the auto brake, the RTO. All right, easy. I'm going to check out the aircraft. Working down in a, in, a, in a flow. All right, so he's on his uh, walk around now. This is where I would go ahead, the one portion of the FMC that the co-pilot does not do for you for now is uh, set the, uh, the uh, departure um, SID and the arrival star as well as your runway. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to be departed uh, uh, from runway 33 and using the Bangor 4 departure, which is a vector departure. Um, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take the ILS-27, Oceanic 5, and uh, Kenny Bunk uh, uh, transition and uh, execute that. So you can see the co-pilot put his FMC on the leg page. That just makes it a little easier for you so you can see uh, any discontinuities that you can quickly uh, correct uh, using his FMC. Uh, that's just for uh, time's sake. Uh, then we'll look through, and so we have a good route there. And that's it. That's the... Uh, the FMC uh, programmed in a, in a nutshell. Uh, so I typically fly on VATSIM, and while the co-pilot is doing all this, this is where I would be uploading my flight plan, coordinating with the controllers, uh, checking my uh, SID, uh, making sure everything's loaded into my flight bag, uh, all those general things while the, the co-pilot is, uh, is doing his thing. Uh, I'm going to call the co-pilot back a little bit early from his walk around for the sake of time. But I do want to take note of these things right there that are in magenta. These are things that the, the pilot or tasks that the pilot, you, have to perform. So in this case, uh, you would have to set the, uh, the landing altitude, um, which is in, uh, is, um, excuse me, it's uh, 50 in, uh, in Boston since we're going there. Um, eventually, your co-pilot will be able to do that for you too, but... Uh, that is just not a variable uh, that PMGG allows uh, me to read at this time. I'm sure it will be uh, something that's available in the, uh, in the future. But anytime you see something in, in magenta, that means that is, a, is a, a task that you, as the co-pilot, would have to per perform. If I had the, um, the option uh, of program FMC during pre-flight not enabled, that would be down here in magenta. Just to remind you, that is something that you have to do. Uh, if you're interested in realism, uh, w uh, I would recommend that you set the, the MCP to off and the uh, FMC to off. Uh, uh, these are things that the pilot traditionally does uh, during uh, uh, with the pre-flight uh, flow. The co-pilot usually will take care of most everything else. So, All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and ask the co-pilot to come back in by holding Control and Alt. Aircraft is good to go. And then you're going to see him come in and, and continue his flow. He's going to set the altimeter, uh, which he just did, and uh, set the MCP, auto throttle going on, uh, heading uh, and altitude. And I'll, I will talk about this in just a minute. Um, now he's going to perform the stall warning test. Again, first flight of the day. There that is. And then the uh, GPWS test, uh, which takes about 75 seconds. And you should hear the uh, the aerial alerts uh, notifying you or uh, letting you know that the GPWS system is operational. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Airspeed more. Airspeed more. So uh, while the GPWS test is uh, is undergoing, I'm going to go ahead and just quiet that for just a minute. Uh, and I want to talk about the uh, two two things right now, two uh, anomalies with this particular aircraft that I want to be uh, I I plain and, and obvious. Excuse me, honest with you. You saw he did not correctly set the MCP. This works about 50% of the time. If you saw in the previous video, the co-pilot set the uh, the MCP just fine. Uh, I'm having difficulties reading these variables. They pop in and out of the aircraft or or, or of the. Um, uh, FSU IPC, which I'm using to read the var variables. I am sure there'll be more fidelity once uh, PMDG releases the uh, the SDK, 
But for now, the two things that the only two things that uh, I cannot do is set the autopilot uh, every single flight. It works about 50% of the time, uh, which is a little frustrating. And the second portion uh, is uh, I, I cannot abstract the V speeds directly from the uh, FMC. Again, I'm sure that is something that uh, I'll be able to do in the future once PMDG re releases the uh, the SDK. But that's where I am for, for right now. So make sure that you're you're checking and you're configuring the uh, the settings correctly for your autopilot. And then I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, you'll have to set your uh, your V speeds if you choose to have FSFO read them out uh, during the takeoff roll. Uh, I will show you how to do that in, in just a second. So I went ahead and set the MCP uh, just to make sure that it's set correctly. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and proceed to the, uh, to the pre-flight checklist. Um, and let's reestablish sound to... Okay, so there we go, guys. Let's go to pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested. Navigation transfer and display switches. Normal and auto. Window heat. On. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Flight instruments. Okay, so once again, the flight instrument, the reason why he's pausing on this is because, again, I, you can, I can't always read the, the heading, uh, what that is right Flight now. instruments. So um, uh, you'll just have to hit Control and Alt, and then that will proceed to the next item. Uh, of course, you can use the voice checklist, which I'll show you after this. Heading set, altimeter set. Parking brake. Okay, so I purposely set the parking brake off. Uh, just to show you how this works, the co-pilot uh, uh, called the the uh, the parking brake, and he's waiting for it to be set to the parking correct, brake to the correct position uh, before he proceeds to the next item. Or right. you also know that he's repeating himself, and that's based on this right here: checklist repeat delay. If you don't want to have your co-pilot uh, parking brake, just set that to zero. Let's go ahead and set it. Set fuel control switches. Cut off. Checklist complete. Okay. So that's the checklist in uh, in the button format. So the button format, or excuse me, the button mode. Anytime that the microphone or voice is not active, you're in button. You're in what I call button mode. Or so let's go ahead and now let's try the, uh, the the checklist. And this time let's use voice mode. And you can activate the voice by simply clicking on the microphone here, and you can watch it uh, turn to um, uh, turn to green. Pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested. Navigation transfer and display switches. Normal and auto. Window heat. On. Pressurization mode selector. Set. Flight instruments. Set. Parking brake. Set. Fuel control switches. Set. Checklist complete. Okay. So you see uh, that you can also do checklist uh, via voice. You can also... There's also a, a slew of commands that you can use to, uh, uh, for voice. If you're curious uh, what voice commands are available, uh, you can just go to support, open up the guide, uh, and in the guide are all your, all your voice command uh, options uh, that are available right here. You also, uh, I purposely called self some checklist items inappropriately. For example, I, uh, I, with the uh, fuel cutoffs, I said uh, set instead of uh, uh, cut off. I did that intentionally. FSFO does not require you to remember every checklist verbatim. You could simply say set, check, whatever checklist re appropriate response, and it will proceed to the to the next item. So there's no need to worry about re remembering a script or what have you. Um, so that's all you, you have to do. All right, so now that the pre-flight checklist is done, um, what we can do since we're in auto flow option is on, just close the doors, and you can see your copilot set the page for you. Close the door, and then your copilot will automatically uh, uh, initiate uh, the before start flow. And again, now he's going to set your your uh, your performance data within the uh, the uh, the FMC. And if you're wondering where he's getting the reserve and the cost index, that's from Simbrief. So if you don't use the Simbrief option the program FMS uh, uh, option will be somewhat useless to you as he would just put generic information in those boxes. So there he is. He even puts your cruise altitude win in there. Uh, he's going to move. And again, uh, we set a, a flaps, um, uh, our D rate of 47, which he just put. And we set detent 4, which correlates to flaps 10. He just set your trim. And now he's setting your V speeds for you. 
So there it is. The Copilot just completely programmed uh, your FMC. Uh, and what he's going to do now is he's going to check uh, his data out to make sure that, uh, that it's accurate. Looking at all of his legs page uh, before returning back. And there you go. So now we're starting the APU because we need the bleed air from the APU to start our engines. Again, uh, he would not do this if we had the uh, initial power set to APU vice GPU. Uh, again, if you press for time, you can just set it for APU and then get rid of the, uh, the system test. And that will save you a good, a good 10 minutes during your pre-flight flow. Uh, again, FSFO is designed for maximum uh, realism while also trying to uh, help new pilots learn sophisticated aircraft. Uh, that's what's kind of cool about this program. He literally will check every switch for every uh, flight, um, uh, particular flight phase to make sure that it's set in the correct position. But if you wanted to exercise real, uh, real procedures, there's nothing stopping you from setting uh, the switches yourself. All your co-pilot's going to do is check to make sure it's set in the, in the correct position. So that in that way, this program can be as, as complicated and as sophisticated or as easy as, as you want it to be. Okay, so there we go, the uh, APU. We're now on APU power. Um, and now the uh, he's going to go, again, manipulate his FMC, disconnect uh, the GPU, and he also removed your wheel chocks, and he's gonna set his, uh, his screen uh, to the performance uh, uh, page. All the fuel panels just went on. He's now turning on the hydraulic pumps, as you just saw. The packs go off for engine start. Uh, exterior light, so there we go. The beacon lights are now on, or excuse me, any, any collision lights. And that is also you FSFO. It has uh, cabin announcements as well as announcements from uh, the co pilot, which we'll hear also here in just a little bit. All carry on luggage should now be either in the overhead compartments or under the seat in front of you. The cabin crew will be passing to make their final safety checks before departure. Okay. Thank you. As you can see, um, um, this is the warning I was talking about. Uh, FSFO cannot read as of yet the V speed. So these are something that we'll have to import ourselves into the performance page. Uh, and as you can see, the copilot has already set his page for you. So all you have to do is, excuse me, is enter them into the, uh, the performance data in FSO, FSFO here. Now, uh, this isn't important um, if, you are, if you are using um, voice mode or if you are having uh, the, the PMDG read out your V1, VR, and V2 speeds. Uh, you won't need this data. Now, if you're using um, the, uh, the option for the co-pilot to retract the, uh, the flaps for you, the V2 speed is essential. Uh, this is the speed which he will use to calculate at what uh, speed uh, the the, uh, the when the aircraft passes uh, where he needs to, uh, to to retract the flap. So make sure if you're using the button mode and you want the the copilot to manipulate your uh, flaps that you go ahead and you enter the uh, the correct V speeds. All right. Uh, so with that out of the way, we have our V speeds entered. Let's go ahead and do the before checklist. And I will use this. Uh, let's use this in voice mode. Before start checklist. Before start checklist, flight deck door locked. Fuel eight seven zero seven pounds checked. Passenger signs set. MCP checked. Takeoff speeds V one 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 niner VR one two zero V two one two four checked. CDU preflight completed. Rudder and aileron trim. Set. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Anti-collision lights. On. On. Checklist complete. All right, so there's the, uh, the, the checklist. Uh, one other thing I, I want to make note of, two, a couple other things, uh, actually. You heard uh, for some of the, uh, the responses that the co-pilot read back uh, the numbers. For example, uh, fuel. Again, that's based on a, a configuration option uh, that's called read back numbers. It's set to on here. You'll notice he did not read back the MCP. 
Again, once uh, the uh, SDK is released for the PMDG 737, he will read back what you have programmed into into the autopilot, just like he does on every other uh, 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 pro or every other aircraft that I have a FSFO profile for. Uh, just a little behind right now because of the lack of the SDK, but that's it. That's the only thing that doesn't work. Okay, let's go ahead and let's start our pushback, and we will use the embedded uh, pushback options within FSFO to do so. And you can do this in one of two ways. You can uh, do it by a voice command, or you can do it by a pushback control. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use pushback control uh, for this uh, option. But in the other video, uh, I demonstrated uh, how you can use uh, control pushback complete with your, your voice if you so choose. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. We're ready for pushback. Okay, as you can see, the uh, co or the, the ground crew is inserting the steering pin. Steering inserted. Release parking brake. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and release the brake. Starting push. All right, and it takes uh, a little bit to tuck, uh, for the c uh, tug to connect. Uh, so we'll wait on that. Again, you can do this via voice. Uh, but I, I actually... I'm actually surprised at the number of people who actually prefer butt mode over voice. Um, so it kind of surprised me, which is why I added the uh, the button pushback controls in this option, in this version, before it was all done via voice. Uh, but a number of people emailed me asking if I if I could add some, some button controls. So uh, too easy to do. Uh, so I went ahead and did it, and uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. All right, so the tug is now connected, and we are clear to start engines. Beginning uh, pushback. I will start my engines again. I can command the the co-pilot to do it or press the button. Start engines. Starting engine two. Okay. Nose left. Oop, wrong way. Nose right. Okay. So we'll turn the nose to the right here. Straighten her out. No straight. And then we'll go ahead and stop the pushback. Stopping pushback. Set parking brakes. Tow bar disconnected. See you on the left side with the pin. Have a great flight. We'll look for you on the left side with the pin. Thank you. Okay. So there's the uh, the ground uh, pushback completed. Again, as I stated in the other video, I recognize that there are far better freeware programs out there, but uh, the engine two cut out. The integration of uh, of it isn't too bad for this if you don't feel like starting engine one installing yeah another program. And you certainly shouldn't have to purchase uh, another pushback program. All right, so. There are some other functionalities too within the operations uh, page. Um, I'm going to add uh, to this uh, greatly in the future. Uh, I like to use it uh, to get the weather reports from my uh, departure and um, destination uh, airport, or excuse me, landing airport. So that's a useful uh, utility. Uh, you can also uh, take a look at your current uh, load sheet. Um, that's useful to make sure that you're not over the maximum uh, weight and, and things of that nature. Ground services, again, you request a fueling truck um, and toggle the jetway. Of course, we were out here parked on the ramp. FSFO will automatically do that for you anyways based on a, a, a configuration option. Engine 1 cut out. Explained in other video. Uh, flight services, again, I will add to this in the, uh, in the, in the um, future. Uh, I plan to add a PAX module to this too that simulates uh, passengers. Uh, once once uh, all the aircraft are perfectly... Uh, uh, work perfectly for for every user um, not there yet to where all engine stable turn focus on to the PAX module so there we go the engines are stable and since we are in auto he automatically started the uh, auto flow is on so we automatically started the auto flow he's working his way down the panel he's on probe heat now which he just turned on the packs are coming back on uh, then he will stop the APU which he just saw uh, start switches go to continuous, anti-ice depending on the weather and the precipitation. Obviously, it's nice out, no anti-ice required. Setting flaps to 10. Again, we set that on the performance screen. 
uh, we told him uh, detent four. Okay, and now he's gonna go ahead and make sure that his page is back uh, to the performance page and then ours should be on the legs page. So that is the proper configuration for takeoff. Uh, and now let's go ahead and we'll do that. This taxi checklist, we'll do it via um, button mode. Taxi checklist. Generators. On. Probe heat. On. Anti-ice. Set. Isolation valve. Auto. Engine start switches. Continuous. Recall. Checked. Auto brakes. Reject to take off. Flight controls. All right, so for the controls, just move it to the full left. Full left. Full right. Full right. Full back. Full back. And full forward. Full forward. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. Checklist complete. All right, so a couple things uh, uh, I want to highlight there. You notice that some of the checklist items were highlighted in blue. The blue means that there is no internal value for FSFO to check, so you will just call it out and then move to the next uh, item without looking at, uh, at any internal parameters. If you get stuck on a checklist item, make sure you hold, you, all you have to do is hit control and alt and he will automatically uh, move to the next item. If you're in button mode, if you're in voice mode, you just have to say set or checked or, or what or what have you. All right, you also notice that the rudder wasn't uh, included in the into the flight control check. If you choose to add it, you can do so by just clicking this button to, to, to on uh, um, uh, uh, just yes, if you will, green, make it green and the rudder will be included in your flight control chest. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's taxi out to runway 33. Um, it's a long taxi. And you'll have to confuse uh, on the my develop machine. I, I don't have much uh, configured uh, in the way of... Uh, uh, from the cockpit, this is your first officer. I uh, just want to take a moment to welcome you aboard and uh, thank you for flying with us today. Our taxi to the runway should be pretty uneventful and uh, we're anticipating an on-time departure. Uh, just sit back, relax, and we'll have you in the air shortly. Okay, again, if you're using uh, an external program to do uh, uh, cabinet omniot sounds, uh, such as uh, flight deck messages or what have you, uh, you always have the option uh, to turn uh, to turn those off by right here. Just flick that to no. Watch the ground speed. All right, so I exceeded 30 knots, and the co-pilot let me know that I was going too fast. Excuse me, was going too fast. You can set that again on the configuration page, SOPS menu. All right, so we talked about this. This is just uh, some uh, interaction with the Watch flight ground speed. with the flight attendants that I plan to expand out in the future. So, for example, if you wanted to let the cabin know that you're uh, delayed. Hey, it looks like ATC is delaying our departure. Uh, we'll let the cabin know in uh, just a couple of minutes. Okay, I'll let the crew know. Again, uh, that will be expanded out uh, much so, or much more in the in the future. So, um, look forward to that once all the aircraft are up to a standard where I can be uh, uh, proud of and happy with. Okay. Again, uh, you'll have to excuse the sloppy taxing. I don't have my rudder pedals on the uh, on the development machine, so. Um, Watch the ground speed. I do have a pretty decent yoke, though. The Thrustmaster Airbus yoke is not bad for the price. Probably one of the best I've used, uh, uh, at least for the for the price. Okay. Um. Watch the ground speed. And uh, so, sorry again. I I, am, I don't have a throttle either on my development machine, so uh, I'm a little uh, as far as controlling speed and, and maneuvering the aircraft, a little sloppy right now. Okay, guys. Um, so we're almost here, and I'm going to use voice for this one. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Flaps. Set. Stabilization trim. Set. Checklist complete. And now you'll go about his flows. Flight attendants prepare for takeoff. Setting the landing lights to on. And you should see the strobe. Go to an, uh, strobe and steady. And then he's setting his M MFD for, uh, for takeoff. And then there you go. We're all configured. He even started his clock over there. Um, all right. So that we are now on the runway and uh, not lined up, but 
let's go ahead and uh, and um, I'm gonna tell the co-pilot to set takeoff uh, takeoff prower by uh, by voice command. Takeoff thrust. Takeoff power. Okay, a little embarrassed. I cannot remember what the uh, what the uh, what I have set the uh, uh, takeoff thrust. So you'll have to excuse my uh, my ignorance as I look at the the guide uh, for which takeoff thrust for what I set it to. And I'll have my ignorance on full display. I will keep that in here. But this is also good uh, to let us look at the uh, the guide real quick here. Uh, right there, it's takeoff power. Uh, how foolish. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again. Takeoff power. Thrust set. Checked. Let's take it out. Let's put it back in button mode so you can get that. Speed alive. Checked. 80 knots. Checked. I'm going to use voice mode. I used button on the last version, so. V1. Rotate. V2. And, uh, Positive rate. Gear up. Landing gear up. Four hundred feet. Heading select. Heading select on. B nav. B nav on. Acceleration altitude. All right, let's pitch down. Command A. Command A on. B nav. B nav on. Okay, so as you can see, I uh, I that was voice. Flaps one. And now I put it back in button mode, so you can see Flaps that. Flaps two. That the co-pilot is um, is doing all this Flaps one is doing all this for you while we're in butt mode. But if I was in flaps up, if I was in voice mode, I would I would be able to call these myself. But I wanted to uh, uh, show flaps you zero the difference between uh, between both of them. Okay. El nav on. Okay. After takeoff checklist, engine bleeds on packs auto landing gear up and off flaps up no lights checklist complete. Okay, so there you go. So you saw the co-pilot went ahead and he put the landing gear in the off position for you. Uh, he reset his uh, his uh, FMC. He's now on the legs page. Uh, and which he will move to the uh, to the progress page here once we get up to up to cruising uh, altitude. Uh, you will also see the uh, the co-pilot once we get to 10,000 feet. Uh, he will go ahead and he will set the um, the landing lights uh, to the uh, to the off position. It wasn't night, so we didn't have the turn off lights on. Uh, had they been on, he would have flicked those to the off position also during the after after takeoff checklist. Uh, also, uh, you saw in the climb out, I commanded the uh, heading select, and I commanded the uh, autopilot on. But again, if voice mode was not active, uh, the co-pilot would do that automatically for you if you had values set into these configuration options right here. So and you would engage VNAV once you got above 800 feet, and you would engage LNAV or heading select uh, once you got above 400 feet. Uh, the difference uh, between those two uh, which he chooses is based on what you enter into the SID. If you select SID no, uh, which I had here because the Bangor 4 is what is called a vector departure, the co-pilot would have he heading select once passing through 400 feet. If you would have selected SID yes, he would have selected LNAV. So that's what that is. Uh, all these options that are have asterisk, that is, uh, is used uh, when you are again in butt mode. Butt mode is any time you don't have the, the voice enabled. If you don't want the co-pilot to do any of these for you, uh, the ones that are in asterisk, you can simply set them to zero, and that effectively turns them off. Passing 10,000 feet. 
Okay, so there we are. We're past 10,000 feet. Uh, the co-pilot is now going to set all the lights into the to the correct position. Uh, you saw he turned the taxi lights off uh, uh, at uh, at 10,000 feet. That's another configuration option uh, that you have coupled uh, taxi lights to landing lights. I have that set to yes. So essentially, any time the uh, the landing lights are on, the taxi lights go on with them. There are a few uh, airlines uh, that require that in their standard operating procedures. I think Delta is the, one of the primary ones. Uh, but most airlines, and it's configured, if you set that to no, uh, the taxi lights will go off uh, when you enter the runway uh, threshold and go back on uh, when you, uh, when you uh, uh, land, or when you leave it when you land. So as you can see, um, FSFO does provide uh, data, relevant data. It lets you know uh, how many miles to top of descent, uh, how many miles to you reach your uh, destination airport, along with uh, estimated arrival times, both in local and Zulu. Uh, that is why uh, it is important that you set your, uh, your data in the performance page. Um, so that's what FSFO uses to calculate how close and how far you are to your destination. Again, this I find this to be uh, to be useful for me, anyways. Hopefully for you too. Okay, so the next action that your co-pilot will perform is uh, once we get over the transition altitude, uh, which it happens to be in uh, in the United States of 18,000 uh, feet, he will set uh, both of uh, uh, the altitudes. He will set those to standard, which is 2992. Uh, you should see that once we pass 18,000 feet. Again, uh, I'm happy with this uh, build right here. I have not seen any errors that I, I was not aware of. Again, the two biggest things I cannot do is uh, with any uh, accuracy or reliability read the MCP data. So using voice commands to set altitude, to set your heading uh, are problematic at, at, this, at, this, uh, at this point. I'll try it, we'll see. I, again, it works 50% of the time. Uh, let's wait till we pass 18,000 feet, uh, and then I'll, I'll try it. Transition altitude. See, Checked. There, there you go. We set it to standard. And on the descent, uh, when we pass that same uh, altitude, he'll go ahead and he'll set them back for you, uh, take them out of standard. So let's try voice command. I'm fairly confident it won't work, but let's see. Set heading, 360. Heading, zero. Safe, yeah. Um, and the last video it worked, and this one didn't. That's about accurate. It's 50-50. Uh, uh, again, I can manipulate the controls just fine with the uh, with the data that I have. It's reading the variables that I'm having uh, issues with, and obviously the copilot can't set the variable if I can't read it. So uh, that's where we're at. I'm, uh, you know, 99% confident uh, that will be worked out once the uh, once the SDK is released. And I, you know, the PMGG actually tells you how to do it. Um, I'm being told they are working on that, and we shouldn't be too far off. Uh, but I am uh, um, happy with the aircraft and with FSFO in its current form. I, I think it works incredibly well, uh, even without those uh, those uh, slight anomalies, if you will. And I'll make sure that's clearly listed, uh, both on Sim Market uh, and everywhere else too, just so you can make the decision whether or not those are showstoppers for you or not. All right, so we're coming up to the flight level 240. The co-pilot, you should hear the co-pilot make an announcement as well as uh, reconfigure his MFD. From the cockpit, we've leveled out at our cruising altitude. Uh, once we fl uh, flip the seatbelt sign off, you're free to get up and move about the cabin. Uh, however, while seated, we ask that you keep your seatbelts fastened as turbulence is unpredictable. At present, we're expecting an on-time arrival, and uh, we'll be sure to keep you updated as we get closer to our destination. Okay, there you go. The, uh, the sounds vary. They're between four different ones, so you won't hear the same cockpit messages uh, every single time. And I can add more, too, if that's not enough. Uh, I think that's a pretty good demonstration. We've been uh, on for 45 minutes, and you're, I think you're fairly tired of so, uh, uh, my voice. So we'll go ahead and sign off uh, now. Again, if there's anything I'm missing or anything you want, 
Uh, if it's within my realm of, uh, of abilities to do, I will certainly uh, do everything possible to make this a product useful for everyone. All right, thank you for your time.